Hey guys, uh, I'm getting you here. I'm looking at the agenda. We can start. I'll act as the chair if everybody's okay with that. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, Samir. Hey, Femin. Hey, uh, is there anybody else you're waiting to join? Uh, I think we're good to go from our side. We have everybody, we could start. Uh, well, I meant. Hello, uh, I'm saying it. Hey, yeah. I think we have a quorum, we can start. Um, uh, okay, so Pritish and Milan will not be able to join, so I have requested Rakesh to help with the technical uh, questions you have. So if you're looking at the agenda, um, we can go through it quickly. Uh, I think the first two review items are from you. Uh, is that you for the notation Corgo PR review? Is that, what's the request there on the notation core go pull request just to, requesting a review from pratish and milan is that the request uh yeah that's a, uh that's a refactor uh and i think uh, pratish has some questions uh and actually uh bing bing uh, today uh, bing bing also joined uh he also uh answered some questions in, in the discussion, notation discussion issue. So uh, so this issue is, is that we, we need to protest uh, to, to uh, we need a protest response uh, to see whether uh, Bing Bing has uh, addressed his, uh, his questions. Um, but since yes. protest is not, uh, didn't join today, yeah. so. Yeah, he's out of the office. He and Milan are out of the office. They're on vacation this week. So it will be tough to get a response on them from this week. Is this something we can revisit next Monday? Is that possible? Uh, may, may, maybe it's, uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, late because this is already uh, lasted for maybe for, for two weeks. Uh, may, maybe uh, Rakesh, could you help to check the, the discussion issue to see any question from your side, or you can help to see whether this uh, address pretest uh, question because uh, from the discussion issue, this item and uh, two seven eight is is quite quite clear uh, about everything. Maybe you can also take a look, and also for the PR, you can uh, you can try to give your comments. Also, uh, if you want, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I'm just wondering if you want to like, want me to explain the refactoring like for now, or maybe you can just look at the, the discussion. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I can I can read the PR. Okay. Looks like it has uh, good amount of information already. I will I will go through that. Yeah, so, may, may, maybe, uh, sorry, uh, maybe Bimbi, you can give a, a very short yeah, uh, okay. description of this, uh, of this PR, why we needed to do the uh, refactoring so that the Rakesh can quickly uh, catch it up. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, our refactoring is on the location code goal and we just refract the sign the sub module to a new, we, we rename it to like signature some modules. So basically, we have two refactoring. One is on the envelope. So currently, envelope is abstract, and we just expose it as an interface. So we have an envelope interface for now. I think it shouldn't make sense because the interface would be easier for like unit testing or other stuff. And so we still expose the same APIs like sign and verify. And also, we have another like base envelope struct that implements the interface and it will have some like a common validation stuff which shared by the COSI and the JWS envelopes. And another refactoring is on the signature provider. So firstly, we just re rename the signature provider to sign the interface. So the API is, is are the same, but just the name changed. And also because while we reflect Refactoring the signer is that we want to like, support both COSI and the JWS. And because the current implementation of the local signature provider is coupled with the JWS logics, so we just refactoring, we, we just did a refactoring on the implementation. So now it can support both COSI and the JWS. And so so that the two like, basic refactoring. And also we did some refactoring on the names and all and some implementations, but the core refactoring is the envelope interface and the uh, signature provider. Is this PR adding COSI support as well? Yes, yes. So actually it's kind of like blocking the COSI stuff because we already tested the COSI branch on our like, local environment. So it works for now. And this is the first PR that introduces the refactoring. And once it's merged, we can like add uh, the following PRs. So yeah, it, it's, it's kind of blocking like for two weeks. So we want to move it fast. I see, it looks like this is a bit lengthy PR. Um, I need to check my schedule, what I have. Um, and then yeah, I yeah. can respond on the um, Slack channel. Okay. What part of the PR I'm going to look at? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Rakesh. Uh, because this is, uh, it's already takes uh, uh, some time for this PR, so your your help will be very precious. Is there any chance we can uh, split the PRs into smaller PRs? That might help. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Actually, for the COSI support, we have like at least the four or five. This is the very first PR for now. And if you think it's too big, we can split as well. Yeah. Because I think if, if you have the interface refactoring work um, split out from the COSI edition, um, it'll make it easier and faster to review. Um, so just a suggestion um, if it- Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think it's kind of big for now. Yeah, I know that. So yeah, we, we, we can definitely do that. Okay, so if we are splitting it, is there a specific thing you want to get reviewed so that you can merge this week to Rakesh? I didn't get that. What is the specific thing Rakesh can review? If he, even if he looks at the schedule. Okay, yeah, sounds good too. Okay, so we'll just track it via Slack then. 
uh, Rakesh will look at the schedule and we'll come back and see what he can review. And you can then, then point him to what will be the critical thing to review if you were to split it. Okay, uh, that yep. takes care of the first one. Let's look at the second agenda item, the spec conflicts. Uh, Rakesh, is this something you can help us with as well? Yeah, actually, this item is uh, uh, this item is prepared by by Shirley, but actually, uh, Shirley cannot join today. So actually, there is uh, they are back these conflicts. Uh, Shirley uh, detected that for this uh, sign and replication flow. Uh, is in this uh, order verifies the certificate chain before sign. However, uh, in uh, another spec, plugin extensibility is uh, is another flow. It's uh, it's different, so it's better that we we can have uh, have an aligned uh, workflow for both specs. I think the first link is referring to local signing and the second link is referring to remote signing. I think that's why that conflict is there. Uh, for local signing, we have the chain readily available, right? So we do that check um, before we generate a signature. But with the remote signing, we don't have the chain locally. Uh, we get the chain as part of, as part of getting the signature back from the remote service. Uh, that's why we validate the chain after generating the digital signature. But all these things are happening within the signing step. These are like different tasks within signing, right? So I, I don't think this is a big of a conflict that we need to resolve. Uh, the the first uh, spec sign and the replication flow is not only targeting to local sign. Uh, actually, this is the overall sign and the replication workflow for for the notation. It's not only in the local uh, sign. Yeah, I think the the spec is talking in general terms, but I think that is um, related to local signing only. I think we can probably update the language there and say that we the chain needs to be verified in the signing workflow before generating signature or after generating, but that needs to be done within um, the signing step, right? I think uh, we can update that language uh, actually there is a yeah, i think this is also a, a issue 189 created by shirway so so we uh, so maybe you could uh, uh, leave your comments for for that okay yeah if the if there is an issue then yeah i can update that yeah the issue is 189 okay. yeah yeah, so please add your comments so that the later Shui can can check it. Thank you. Uh, I'm Rakesh, I'll touch base with you on that as well. I remember there was a discussion two weeks ago regarding verifying the certificate chain before verifying the signature. I am wondering if there's a link to the two things, but yeah, I can touch base with you afterwards. There's a discussion two weeks ago, Milan was part of, Milan and Shibi were part of that. Okay. I'll share, with, I'll share that link with you later. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, moving on to the third item here. Uh, align notation on RC1 scope, feature level and target date. Uh, yeah, I think before we handle that, uh, can we look at the fourth item on the list, uh, the alpha three patch for pulling in the ORAS go? I believe the the bug which was blocking interop with some other OCI registries such as ECR has now been fixed. Uh, and we need to have the ORAS go. I know this is a different meeting, but uh, 
wondering if are you a maintainer or or as go as well uh yes uh we also working uh for auras yeah so i was wondering if you can handle that and uh the bug fix which was blocking the drop has been checked in if we can do a release of the orasco library then we can do a re we can do a patch release of the uh, notation go on top of that uh you mean the issue fixed by nima yes actually we had a plan to release orasco rc.3 uh, next Monday, I'm not sure if this time works for you, since there are, uh, there are two or, or three other PRs that, that is related to this release, so we want them could be included in this release. Yeah, I think we can, uh, we can wait till then, uh, what, uh, I think yeah, Alima I... has, yeah, okay, go ahead. No, I will check internally. I think we can wait till then. Uh, we'll just move things around. Uh, so I will hold on to do the pull request on the final system release notes until then. So that when we do the final system release notes for Alpha 3, which will announce to the world that Alpha 3 is here now with, uh, uh, and people can use it uh, as per the Alpha 3 feature set, we can do it on Monday at the same time then. That will work. Okay, thanks. Um, by the way, uh, I left a comment in your uh, Alpha 3 release notes in GitHub. So uh, I suggest we can migrate all of those release notes uh, to the uh, Node 3 v2 website instead of in that roadmap repo. In this way, people can find it easily. I agree with that. Of... Yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. In fact, I left a comment. That's a good idea, but only after the release notes PR has been merged. Once it mm -hmm. is merged, we can post it. So all what I'm, so I think I left some comment in the PR as well. I like that idea uh, that the release note should be in the notary.dev website as well, so people can get to it. But let me merge the PR once uh, we update the release notes with the patch version of Notation Go and Notation CLI, and then we can announce that, hey, Alpha 3 is here. So that will be as soon as next Monday. Okay, uh, you, you know, uh, the current notary v2 website is quite empty so we, we can uh, add these three blocks to uh, these three blocks to the website first and we can migrate some uh, user manual guides to the website then people can uh, go to the official website and uh, refer to your blog and uh, the user menu okay uh, are we tracking that on the notary project? I didn't see uh, any item there. Maybe I didn't look at it close enough in the last few weeks. Are we, did we create an issue that we are tracking for that now? Uh, I see we had a lot of issues related to the website construction in notary uh, website repo. Uh, let me go yeah. there right now. Can you share your screen and walk me through it if it doesn't take uh, more than two minutes to... Uh, I think, you? yeah, I think I can forward those links. Okay, that will be great. I haven't been following. I think you're talking about this repo, right? Uh, yeah, notationproject.dev. Notationproject.dev. Yeah, I've not been tracking yeah. items in that repo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we yeah we we have a lot of uh, issues under that repo. I think maybe we could plan some efforts. In, in the in the coming months to to update this uh, website we, we can That's start farming the existing issue from there yeah and then we can uh, gradually uh, improve it okay and then we can bring these projects or this repo in the notary project uh, management under under the same notary project management as well right so it's one place to go and see all the open action items yes you are right uh, I see some issues are already there. You you can check. Okay. Yeah, I see some issues. Okay, there. Uh, okay, that takes care of that item. So let so I'll record that uh, we agreed to wait till next Monday for the ORS Go to be released. And once ORS Go releases, we can release Notation Go and then publicly announce L uh, Note 3 Alpha 3 to be available. Okay, uh, let's move on to the third bullet. Uh, Align notation RC1 scope. 
Yeah, I know we had parked this item until Alpha 3's release. I think we are on the verge of releasing Alpha 3, so we can pick up this item now. What do you have in mind to discuss there, Yi? Yeah, actually, uh, in the in the project board, right? Yeah. Uh, we have this RC1 tab. Maybe I can show it so that we can easily uh, discuss it. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, that, let's do that. I know we have created a discuss milestone and some RC1 milestones. Yes, we can look at them together. Yeah, can you see it? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. So this is our uh, notary planning uh, board. We, we have several tabs here. So here one tab, RC1, we can see all the issues we planned at least previously for the RC1 release. And we also have this uh, RC1 user story, which is more from a, a higher level to understand what's the value we will deliver to our customer. So we, we, we have this user story level uh, issue created. So these are the two parts we, we can uh, at least uh, uh, see the status for, for the RC1 planning. So, uh, so the item in the agenda item is that we, we, we can think about from the user story level, uh, what is missing for RC1 and also we can uh, look at the details issues to see uh, whether uh, some issues are missing for certain user stories, or we, we even need a new user stories to address it. Yeah, that sounds good. Or we have something which should not be in RC1 for the, uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. I think that's what we talked about last month with David present as well. Let's align on the user stories, which we have done. So with the user stories you are sharing, if you were to go to your, those user stories and clear the filter to show the all the user stories so everybody can see the different milestones. If you just remove the milestones from your search query, we, yeah, that's great. We can look at that. So yeah, so alpha three user stories are not being shown here, right? Because they're already complete. Okay. Yeah. So we, we have, we have uh, yeah, we have RC1, RC2, uh, uh, use stories, and we also have uh, use stories uh, under this uh, discussion milestone. We, we can think about to uh, maybe move some some stories to to different uh, milestones, and also we we need to have a have a timeline for each milestone, right? So that uh, with, with the timeline we can know the scope. Then we can see uh, our. Uh, then we can review our resource to see whether our resource uh, can uh, can meet the scope for that timeline. No, that makes sense. I think we should not fix an artificial timeline. I think what we talked about last time was let's agree on the user stories, which we have done. So RC1 is the user stories we're talking about. I am uh, okay if you want to use the rest of the time in this meeting uh, to go and see uh, if all the uh, things in the uh, open milestones or the RC1 not done belong to this user stories or not. If, if they're not, then we can move them to the discuss milestone. And then uh, let's let's do that if, if that's okay, if you wanna use the time that way. So we can do a split screen and we can just quickly uh, flag things which don't belong to these user stories in the detailed tab that you have. I can see the four user stories, sign experience, uh, verify experience, the plugin extensibility, and the and, and listing uh, and doing a mm -hmm. plugin list. Those are the four user stories, right? The remote sign artifact is done. So that user story is complete. So essentially we are saying, how can we improve the user experience for sign and plugins? And sign verify and the plugins. That's the essence of RC1 because alpha three accomplishes a lot of functionality. RC1 gives us the user experience to make it better. So if we go back to your detail tabs, I'm okay looking at them and figuring out which ones don't belong in RC1 based on this user story discussion we just had. Uh, yeah, there's one user story. Actually, we are working on this COSI support. So I think uh, this one, there's another one uh, related to the COSI envelope. It should be uh, under RC1 scope, this one. 
Actually, I had a different opinion of that. I was thinking we had decided uh, that Cozy can come as RC2 or, or post RC1. I know RC1 has moved out quite a bit and maybe it's time to merge RC1 and RC2. But my understanding was we were keeping RC1 as quickly as possible, release RC1. If that is still the case, we can keep Cozy out or we can uh, think about combining RC1 and RC2. But in uh, my mind, RC Cozy was in part of RC2. Uh, I remember previously we agreed that uh, the cosy is uh, in RC1, so so that's why we we have the uh, issues. Uh, we have the cosy release the issues under the RC1. Okay, uh, okay. The user stories do not reflect that. Uh, see which is uh, yeah, the, the user story it's. Uh, uh, I think we, we should uh, we should do that. Uh, initially, this user story is in RC1, but I think that is uh, before our alignment. So maybe uh, at that time we move it to discuss. But uh, we since we are aligned now, so I think this uh, cosy related use story should be in RC1. Let's take a moment to see if any if anybody else has an opinion on it. Uh, I remember last time, maybe maybe Steve, you, you can also comment. Uh, I remember last meeting is the uh, is the morning meeting uh, mm -hmm. in, in the week, so so I didn't uh, join. Uh, I'm sorry, I was distracted. What, what was the question? Uh, Steve, I heard something it's about, about the, Yeah, it's about the cozy assign envelope uh, in the RC1 scope. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, yeah. we wanted an RC1 scope so we can merge all the stuff and be cranking. Yeah, I think uh, for this one, we have the alignment last time with uh, with the AWS and the community. And uh, this uh, cozy sign envelope should be in RC1, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we went off and did all the work in the cozy uh, repo, build cozy repo, and all that's done. It's the only reason it's not released as a 1.0 is we're waiting for validation here uh, to make sure that. Um, we have enough usage to know it's it's justified for a 1.0 release. So there's a little bit of a, it's not chicken egg, it's cart horse and we're good to go. So I, I guess, what is the question? Is, was that the concern or is it just validation that we did the pieces? Uh, it's about this user story. We, we need to move from the discuss milestone to the RC1 oh, milestone, yeah. re reflect the current work. Is there any hesitation? Uh, no, I think Steve, what I was talking of thinking about uh, the last discussion we had, we aligned on the user stories you want, which we were reflecting there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Cozy was part of the a discuss milestone to discuss if it comes in RC1, it increases the scope of RC1. Our idea was to get RC1 out as soon as possible. So if we want to hold Cozy into RC1, the scope will increase for RC1. I, so this is where we discussed a while ago that when RC1 was the end of June, it was fine yep. because we wanted to get the release out. And once we're way past June, we said we can't wait anymore. So this is where you guys are doing, you as AWS are doing the work related to the verify path that you need. And we're doing all the work that we need for the cozy, verif the cozy signing and verification, but we can't wait anymore. We, and we're, we put up the extra resources to do the work. So what's... What's the concern here? Uh, I guess put it differently. Um, I would look at two things. Um, if we launch RC1 uh, without Cozy, what's the date? If we launch RC1 with Cozy, what's the date? What's the difference there? I, I hear you. We're already too late. So I can't, we're, we'll do what we need to do to finish up the Cozy work. So I think it's more a matter of we need to do the Cozy work when what is blocking that just that we said before it's quality we're, we're focused on a set of quality for us cozy is required for that release we've we've missed the june date where we could delay so now we have uh, to finish it, that work no that's fair and i think where, where we're good where i'm kind of get, trying to get at with that is the question that samir had um which was that you know do we just want to combine rc1 and rc2 now given where we are uh, and I think that's really the question is, if we launch RC1 without Cozy, 
are we launching tomorrow? And if we include Cozy, is that like a week's delay? Is that two weeks delay? Like how much work is actually left to kind of uh, complete the uh, support Cozy as a signing envelope? Uh, I don't have a good measure of that right now. No, that's fair. Look, I, I tried doing a demo the other day and I couldn't get the current bits working. So um, I don't think, at least from what I can tell from the public bits that it's, we're not at a place to release RC1 anyway. So I'd love to continue seeing us iterate on that while the team is continuing to do the cozy work and surface whatever bugs are, are related. Um, and when we hit a stable place, we could always discuss this, right? This is kind of like the weekly release cadence piece. Do you things, do, are things working in the branches for the scenarios that you've got working or based on public, the public code or is there something I, I I literally just couldn't get the pieces working. There was way too many pieces that were out of sync with each other. And uh, Steve, were you using Alpha three uh, branch or or the code which is stacked for Alpha three so far, or were you using I'm, from the main line? Yeah, where where did you send me at first? I I've lost track. I think it was Alpha three, and I went back to the November release. Sorry, uh, Steve, uh, the question is to me. Yeah, I was asking, remember when we were, I was trying to do this uh, presentation last week and we couldn't get, I guess it was Alpha 3. We couldn't get Alpha, Alpha 3 wasn't going to support the remote key vault signing uh, and verification. And I don't even know if it worked with trust stores yet. So I had to go all the way back to the November release. Yeah, that's- uh, It was Alpha 3 and this was the question. Yeah, the Alpha 3, yes. Alpha three. Okay, so if Alpha three is not working fine, I think we should not announce Alpha three until we get the Alpha three uh, bits working. Uh, we should not publicly announce Alpha three available if we don't get that working. If that's the higher order bit for me. Yeah. I mean, I think we were. Uh, this is the place where we're talking about. Are we. Are we releasing code on a regular milestone so that people can at least take references to those and, and figure it out? Whether that I would like us to get to a point where it's not broken. We've unfortunately passed that point. Like the one that was whatever was the November release, I think it's alpha one. I don't remember. Whatever the November release was that we were using, bits worked end to end. We knew we didn't want to approve it. So we've been making changes, but we we weren't gating the changes that went into main to make sure that an end-to-end -end experience worked, partly because we didn't have functional testing, partly because we're trying to just quick, we didn't want to block PRs and, and get things done. Uh, that's fine, I, but the main is not a stable, it's not provide the sign verify flow that we had in Alpha 1 yet. So I understand that you guys are doing a very a different plugin that maybe that works in your isolation, in, in what you guys are building, that's totally fine, but main doesn't support the non-cloud provider uh, configuration, and it doesn't support Azure Key Vault uh, remote signing configuration right now. So I'd like to get that stabilized. It just so happens the work the team is doing is doing that with Cozy, so it, all of that stabilization will converge together. From what I can tell, we're really close. That's my impression. I mean, I think that adds some complexity in trying to get code reviews and things merged in. Um, even if you're working together, I would say like those code reviews should really come in as separate um, PRs so we can look at them quickly and understand it. Um, right. I think if everything is tied together, it's very difficult to kind of understand the impact. Um, and I think the other part that I would kind of bring in is kind of, I do agree that we should have more frequent releases, but we should probably put forward a release process uh, that kind of like um, works where we know kind of like here's the criteria when we're cutting a release. I think the last alpha release caught us a little bit by surprise. And so we do want to kind of like figure out um, kind of like, you know, what kind of maintainer sign off and things we want for release processes going forward as well. Um, just to ensure that, you know, um, we're not potentially at a risk of like some random person coming in and cutting a release, which is not the case now, but 
a long-term maintainability, I think that's that's something we want to kind of set forward, like, you know, here's the release cadence or release process and sign up that we want to kind of implement. I think that was one of the agenda items that um, Samir had tacked on. Um, I think there's two things I'm hearing that we need to kind of close on. Um, one is the alpha release that was cut. Sounds like it's unstable and we need to go figure out what the stability issues there are. Um, I want to understand how much work is actually left to get Cozy in um, as the um, in terms of the user stories. Uh, I think if we can get a quick scope on that, that helps. Um, and then um, I think third, the, the OCI work that's happening in ORAS um, those are the three things that sound like it would be good to kind of include um, and kind of cut into RC1, um, mm -hmm. unless there's sort of like other feature sets that, you know, people feel like are worth bringing in. I think those three would be good to kind of go see if we can get into RC1 or not. Yeah, I mean, um, I agree. So I'd like to get to a stable point. And I, I know the team was trying to get to some functional tests that could be, you know, gated, not functional, but unit tests so that before we do in releases, or even before merge, that it can run a set of tests and know it just works like that. I'd love to get to that point, but we made a conscious choice not to block on that to make progress. Um, so yes, the OCI work just, uh, I yes, we've made a lot of great progress in the OCI stuff. Yes, it made it into main, but no, a release hasn't been cut. And um, there's still questions on some various properties on it. So the, Way we've been one way we will enable this is the RS. This is the, the beauty of the way we factored this all out. Um, when that gets to a place where we actually know it works uh, or it's been approved and merged as far as like a, a released spec, then we can very quickly make those changes to the RS Go library and it'll just work, right? Like we've already done all the factoring, the hard part to support reference types has been done for you know a year in all the auras and uh, stuff that we've done. Um, so we're, we're not blocked. We're far ahead of anybody else doing anything in this space. I just don't want us to get, like right now we have those scenarios working. We have them working in Azure. I'm assuming Michael has them working in ECR. I, I don't want to destabilize that, that when somebody decides to change the property from refers back to subject or something else, that we're going through more churn um, because changing the ORS CLI is easy, uh, the ORS Go library rather is easy. Changing our multi-region production deployments for ECR, ACR, and ECR public in MAR, um, those are not easy. And I don't want to destabilize that on my side anymore. I'm, I'm guessing you don't want to destabilize on your side. So I am not at all worried about the, uh, our ability to react quickly to certainly the ORAS, the, what ORAS and what becomes OCI artifact approach, the fallback, which we don't have to worry about in, in AWS and Azure, that one's gonna take a little bit of more PM time to figure out what the flow should be. But even that, um, Notary will just get a free ride because we'll do that in the ORAS Go library and whatever, when you do a notation push to JFrog, I'll just pick on them as an example. Um, it'll realize that, oh, JFrog doesn't support OCI slash or as artifacts, so it'll do fallback. So that one will take a little bit more time, but that's actually the one that's got the most questions on when that will converge. And that might be something we might want to bring Michael into the conversation so that we're all agreeing in, this, in the approach there. Does that make sense, Niaz, or is that a bunch of details that I'm getting into registries just like sometimes you get in the details on <laughs> trust you? <laughs> no, it makes sense. I, and, and I think kind of like um, coordinating between the, um, at least some track, creating some tracking issues in notation and ORS just to kind of yep. like document and understanding I think will help. Um, but that, that makes sense to me. <clears throat> totally. I, I We've been... Uh, excuse me, we've been talking about that with Feynman and Yi and David and a bunch of others around how we, how and when we go off and do that. And uh, in complete transparency, the answer has been, we need to get notation out with Cozy support. Uh, that is pry one. That is pry zero and pry one uh, because we have a working implementation with ORAS artifacts, right? Like this is the thing that why we did the split out of it. I didn't want that work to slip because we wanted to go back and chase our tails on supporting OCI artifact version of it, which is not merged yet, 
not not released. It got merged. It, it has not been released yet. So uh, this is the beauty uh, that we, uh, over a year ago, we took an approach that made sure we had the ability to execute and not be blocked. We just need to continue to execute on that. And as, as soon as that happens, I don't know, a week, we could probably turn around whatever it takes. And by the way, it still won't matter what we're doing in uh, AWS and Azure because we already have the support. It, it really starts to light up the ability to, to push the things like JFrog or Artifactory or um, Lexus Nexus and or Lexus Nexus. No, it's Nexus. Nexus, Nexus yeah. Registry products. Yeah. Okay, so we just brought a new item for consideration for RC1, right? The OCA working group reference spec implementation. Uh, in addition to you're saying COSI should be part of RC1 as well. So I think let's let before we debate uh, going back to the agenda item. Uh, let's discuss on the RC1 scope. Let's go back to the user stories for RC1 and align on that one uh, based on the effort or the, anything else that we want to bring in. I think at this point, let's keep COSI out of RC1. Let's keep uh, ORAS go out of RC1 until we have the scopes on them. And then when we see the scope, then we can bring them in RC1 saying, yeah, it's an additional week. Let's let's bring it in as an example. Let's, let's, uh, let's get this. I can't, I can't support COSI like being pushed out, not in RC1 yet. I, I just uh, need to close on that. Sorry, I think what, what I would reframe this as saying, like, um, we can, let's, let's call out what's needed in RC1. Like we haven't agreed on RC1 is where I would put it right now. Let's come back with the scopes and say, um, here's the dates, here's what it would take for the timeline and we'll close. I don't think we, we, we can say that we're, um, this is RC1 based on the definition we have. Like the user stories we have in RC1, I don't think um, is complete for what we wanna get done. And I think RC1 is going to push out a little bit, which I think is okay. Um, as long as we have the right sets of functionality. Um, I just want to make sure that we make a um, time-based decision in terms of like, you know, like all of this functionality that we're adding in, um, when do we anticipate, like how much work are we adding in or what is the impact to RC1? But I don't, I don't want to say that this is RC1 is, is final at this point, or we're, we're ready with RC1 um, based on what's listed here. Does that make can sense, Amir? Put, it yeah, sort it of does. does. Yes. Can we put Cozy in RC1 and then figure out what about it that's we need to deal with differently? Because I, I just can't keep going without with this hanging out there loose. It just it's causing too much randomization on multiple fronts. And we're, I think we, we want to understand, um, Steve, like what the effort is and potentially kind of like, you know, um, based on timelines, what else would make sense to kind of put in RC1 potentially from our end as well. Um, and so that's why I'm saying, let's not say we know what's in RC1. Um, I would say, I don't know at this point, like what's left from the cozy perspective to kind of say like, you know, how much this is going to impact the timeline. Um, I think it's okay to kind of make that impact, but I'd want to kind of understand like how much effort is actually left in there. I, I, I'm, I understand what you're trying to do, but I, I kind of, the same way that you needed the verification to be in RC1, we need the cozy sport to be in RC1. So I kind of want to reverse the conversation saying, we need that in RC1, what is left? And we can triage potentially around it to, to land it, but I can't, I don't want to have a conversation whether we're still discussing it, it gets pulled in or not. Any more than you don't want to have a conversation about the verification plugin as part of RC1. I mean, I think it, it's going to depend on timelines, right? Like if it's one week, it's one thing. If it's three months, that's a different conversation, right? Um, so I just don't know what the scope that's left is and how quickly we can get this out. Do we, do we have an estimate for that now? Uh, Yi, do we? Uh, for for the cozy, we, we have several PRs already. Uh, we, we have the first PR we mentioned in this meeting that uh, needed to be reviewed. Actually, that is uh, two ways ago. So so we have uh, we, we have the cozy implementation ready. We we have reflected the the framework to support both JWS and the cozy, and we have the cozy fundamental uh, uh, coding uh, ready. To be merged, but the first PR we mentioned during uh, this meeting needed to be to be reviewed as soon as possible, so that once we can have the following PR PRs to be, to be merged. Right. Once this these two PRs are reviewed and merged, then what else is left beyond that? 
uh, we, we have several other PRs from a COSI branch to, to be propped up in the main branch. Yes, so I think so we, we, is it fair to say that what's we already have the working in the COSI branch, so it's just a matter of making those bite-sized PRs into main? Uh, yes, I think so. We, we have that uh, implementation working in the COSI branch. So, so Bing Bing, you, you can comment. Uh, uh, what we need is to merge to the main branch and do, uh, do more testing. Yes, so currently we have called um, three uh, repository, one like notation, notation go, notation code go, we all have like Cozy branch and everything. So now it, it's done. So we have done some like end-to-end -end testing. So everything now. So currently we only have the very first PR, which is the refreshing stuff. And once it's done, we will merge like PR in notation code go, uh, cozy brand, uh, cozy PR for the in the notation code, and also we have another two PRs, one for the notation, one for the notation go. So I think at least maybe four or five PRs. Uh, okay. We must. Um, and in terms of like you know um, the stability testing, um, I think uh, we recognize that there's some stability gaps in. Um, in Alpha 3, um, did you close on those in the notation branch as well? Uh, sorry, the COSI branch as well, or? Uh, which one? I thought I didn't ask that. Oh, I think Steve mentioned there's some stability issues as well, right? Um, so were you able to kind of test end-to-end -end, um, at all, or is this just more kind of like targeted testing that you're able to complete? Uh, well, for an example, one of the things that came up just so yes, they're fixing it with cozy, but to be fair, like one of the things that tripped us up was that uh, the simple walkthroughs where you do a self sign cert used to work with you just put the self sign cert in key vault and it didn't matter whether it's a self signed or a rooted cert. Now that there's a dependency that it be, you know, a, a chain that part fails. That has nothing to do with cozy. That's just an example of how the workflows are not functional right now. Um, no, I, I get that. And so because the, and the, the workflows are not functional, what I was trying to understand is how much testing we've done on Cozy, because if that part is broken, you are, you're not necessarily able to kind of test the rest, like the underlying Cozy implementations, right? Just because the overlying validation is failing. So no, that's um, fine. But that would, to be fair, like that was failing even for JWS. So what they're yeah. trying to do is fix it as they're fixing it. They're just making sure they're not segmenting it away. Um, so it's being group fixed. And in fact, I think they did come up with a fix for Azure Key Vault. It just was horribly complex, which to be completely transparent, that's why I also want to get this cozy stuff done because I need to be able to then go back and say, all right, I need to make sure the, the various signing services can deal with this new complexity. Like it was going to be a part of that normally, like that I'm trying to not make a whole nother tangent on this. But this is that next phase of peeling the onion that I want to make sure that we get this done so I, we can focus. Instead of having a bunch of cozy work backlogged that we're trying to manage off in a branch that's in main, and we're fixing the next set of usability problems. Yeah, no, I think given where sort of like cozy is, um, I think it makes sense to include it in RC1. Um, at least that that's the kind of like gap I had is like understanding how much effort is actually left. Um, if we have it working in sort of like a branch and really all we're talking about is kind of looking at reviews and getting it merged in, um, then it's not really that much significant effort that we're looking at that's left. Um, I think the one thing um, I would push for is for, um, we'll go and look and see sort of like what kind of reviews we can get in this week um, with sort of like limited resources, but we should be able to pick up on some of the uh, reviews um, starting next week as well, once Mill and then Pratesh are back. They're really more of the experts on the signing envelopes, so we should be able to speed up some of the reviews um, starting next week. Um, I think, okay. Samir, what, what we should probably do is kind of based on kind of like scope, like just get a understanding of what's left for RC1 in terms of like the different user stories. Um, if for cozy kind of like, you know, like I throw in an estimate of what it would take to address kind of like, you know, any feedback and, and merging kind of challenges um, and whatever is left um, in terms of stabilization. Like, do we have a list of all the bugs from alpha, uh, from the alpha release that we need to also go fix for RC1? Uh, Nias, not the bugs, but we had identified uh, a bunch of user experience improvement stories, like uh, the CLI command should have uh, the specific uh, 
error handling done right, or the CLI command should have the right uh, options in it uh, that we want to support on the first release. So that's what we had identified from a feature perspective. Bugs, there are a few, but uh, the ones that Steve identified, I have not seen that bug. Yeah, that's one. That one is not uh, uh, was not printed in the notation yet. It's uh, currently is addressed in the plugin, the AKV plugin. That's a repo. So I think uh, we we can uh, create uh, an issue in the notation branch to address that. Yeah, that makes sense. So 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 given that uh, and what Nia said about. I'm thinking we should uh, drive our effort to either do an alpha three patch release to 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 make sure the sign and verify experience works before we add more feature work to it. That's one idea I have. Uh, if we can spend time on fixing that, like we call it alpha three patch or 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 alpha four, but we should have an end to end working experience first before we add more things to it. Um, I I can create. The create that issue, then uh, we can, uh, because the meaning and uh, pretash is not, uh, they are not uh, here yet this week, even this week. So that is actually related to, to the trust store, this uh, certificate chain. So it's more secure, but uh, it's more cumbersome. So, so we need a, a discussion around that. Currently, we have a way uh, we, uh, to do that, to make it work, but it's too, too complex. So you, gotcha. people need to manually create uh, uh, certificates and uh, pop populate uh, this certificate chain is uh, too cumbersome. So, but it works, but it's uh, it's uh, cumbersome. So, so we need to figure out a solution for that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will create the issue first, and then maybe Rakesh, then later Pridesh and the meaning can can take a look. So I think there actually Pratesh, I think, does have a push to kind of relax that validation. It might not have been merged in yet. Um, we can follow up once Pratesh is back um, if we can't find it. But I, I do believe he pushed out a change to kind of relax that validation. Okay. Oh, you're saying that the validation would work on self individual self-signed sites? Um, yes, um, I think kind of like one of the, the, the things we were talking about is like, where do we anticipate there will be self-signed search versus what protection it offers? Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we should be restricting on whether you're using self-signed search or not. Um, it, there, there can be a lot of valid cases where people are using self-signed search to kind of attest to things that they're building out. And if you're sharing that key, it seems a totally valid use case to have. So. Um, Pratesh, um, I may, he may not have merged that change in. Um, um, I don't know, Samir, if you have like this issue being tracked, but we did um, discuss kind of like in one of the earlier rotation calls, potentially relaxing that. So it might just be something that needs that didn't get merged in um, into Alpha and to get re-merged back in. And he has to be specific, you're talking about it's uh, not requiring a chain in a self-signed cert, right? You can have a self-signed cert. We don't we don't need great signing with keys, but a self-signed cert without a chain in it. Correct. I mean, that's tip, that's essentially just like, you know, you're generating a key, um, you're assigning a certificate to the key, and then you're signing with that same key, right? So you don't need multiple keys or a chain for it. And we totally agree that as a best practice and so forth, that's not, you would do something better. Um, but the way you would do that better is with, you know, better tooling, better signing services, better key management stuff. It's we were trying to avoid the notation CLI restricting that as opposed to, you know, it's like you don't get a cho choice to where you, the gun doesn't get a choice to where you point it. I guess maybe I don't want to go down an example. Um, <laughs> it's more, yeah, I definitely don't want to go down yeah. an example. No, the you can see where I was starting to walk. <laughs> Uh, no, the rationale for this is really kind of like um, we want to put in restrictions where um, you're deriving meaningful security benefits, right? Um, if all the restriction is doing is now just forcing you to store two keys insecurely, it hasn't really um, kind yes. of provided a security benefit on top of that, right? Um, and so that's where I think kind of relaxing this validation makes sense. Um, and then based on sort of like, you know, um, whether you're getting like a public CA certificate or whether like you can get certificate chains there, 
Um, and if there is a chain, we'll validate the chain, but we're not going to push you to use a chain um, uh, and, and compel you to have multiple keys when, you know, you may not even have one properly. Uh, they're they're going to be the same kind of like security. Fair enough. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Do, do we have an issue for, for this or our PR? I will go check on it. If there's not, I will create it and I will request we put it as part of uh, an alpha release, whether we do alpha three patch or whether we do it alpha four, but I would like it to get addressed as soon as possible so that Steve doesn't have to have this complex uh, undertaking. Yeah, yeah, thanks Samuel. I think that's great. I think we, we can do another alpha release to address this issue because even because the implementation is done, it still takes time for, for review. So we, we have the time that we can release another alpha release to address this and also including uh, the ORAS part next week. Uh, we, we can do that. Then later we can, uh, uh, next week when meaning and the Pradesh, uh, they are back, they, they can uh, start uh, review the, the COS APRs. Yeah, that makes sense. Again, uh, Rakesh had to jump out, but I think what Pradesh was going to merge was a PR on the spec part of it, do not insist on the chain. But if you're handling the implementation, you can in your implementation start modifying it to be okay to just use a self-signed cert without a chain. Uh, if you know what I mean, right? Because Pratish is not here to check in a code change, uh, but the discussion I remember with him was on the spec part there. of it. The we spec will allow it. Okay, we can follow up on this one. Okay, we can follow on slide on this one then, yes. As to who will do the implementation work, yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay, so I will. So let's keep in mind, ye, that whether we do an alpha three patch or whether we do an alpha four, I think alpha three patch will probably make more sense at this point. Uh, and uh, let's just drive alpha three patch to include this uh, the issue which is blocking Steve, the ORAS Go, and any other bug you find in your testing which is blocking the end to end experience with alpha three. Let's try to get that in the alpha three patch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we can we can have issues marked with uh, some some actually, milestones just, so, so that we can focus on that. Yeah. Actually, can we just call mark... it alpha four and not worry about doing patches or whatever. Like actually, I, no, I would just, just yeah, yeah. Alpha sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we can move forward. Actually, what I'm saying is officially alpha three is not closed yet, right? So we can still do an alpha oh, three. I thought we did alpha three. Well, we did not cut it formally. We did not announce it to the public. We only did three. Uh, we only did uh, like we did not. You know, put it saying, "Hey, it's 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 it's." Is there here. a tagged release? Say it's alpha three. There is a tagged release for the three uh, we'll for the notation forward. client, and then the two libraries. Just fall forward. Okay. Okay. That we that can... would my 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 simplistic like trying to do a patch just adds complexity. Just there's plenty of numbers left. We can do that. It's it's just that then that alpha three is not usable to anybody, to anybody right? What happened to alpha two? We I was I think I went back to alpha one. Does anybody remember alpha two? Like no, so alpha. alpha two. So alpha two was only for the spec. Alpha two did not have any any code in it. So that proves my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Okay, so then we'll fall forward and just do an alpha four and just release alpha three as is, yeah. and then plan for alpha four. I think the thing is that if we had bandwidth that I would start writing like, what is the the test cases that should pass for us to cut a release? If we can manually run those tests, cut the release, if we can automate that even better. But um, I think we probably ready for that level of maturity. Yeah, we, we, did, we, we decided to do the stories. Sorry, go ahead, Nias. I'm saying, I think we might actually need that for RC1, right? Because one of the things we wanted to do for the RC1s yes. was make sure we didn't have any uh, breaking changes. So I think the test cases and things we, we should uh, put in scope for RC1. Agreed. Okay. Um, just kindly reminder, uh, before we uh, release this patch, I think we might also update that spec uh, related to the signature spec. Uh, you know, uh, I can send that link, that PR link uh, updated by British before. 
and uh, one yeah uh, and one question yeah sorry i missed that film can you said what was the action item for british can you remind me on that one um i assume you are talking about the process or the requirement of uh the certificate the ca certificate and the uh, leaf certificate signing uh, Correct. And, uh, yes yes that's what yeah. i'm talking about yeah maybe you can uh go to the file change i think uh, if we want to do a new release we might also update the spec here maybe we need to simplify the process uh, related to the leaf certificate and uh uh, root and CA certificate here related to the certificate chain. Yeah. In Alpha three. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. It is both a spec change and a code change. Yes, that's what I meant. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question is that I think this is only uh, impacts the workflow of remote signing. So I want to know does AWS has ha have a plan to uh, design or develop a uh, pl notation plugin for AWS KMS, or it is it is already uh, in progress. Uh, if your question is, are we working on a plugin for uh, AWS customers? The answer to that is yes. We we are looking at the plugin design for that. Uh, if that's the question, yes. I, I, think the, so, I think the question is or what's observed, and it's totally fine. Is that you just you're not making an open source? It's something that or not you, you're you're building this. Of course, you're verifying it. Uh, I think there's um, uh, there's still some discussions we're having internally uh, around that. Um, there's mm -hmm. benefits to kind of like making it open source. It's it's not something we've made a decision yet. Fair enough. I think okay. there's uh, the, we just go about this at slightly different approaches, and that's totally fine. I think it's just a matter of like we I think we would have be nice for us to have been able to see some of the workflows that we can test them also and go like, oh, we're seeing this, but it, it's it's totally fine. This is in the transparently opaque boundary. Um, not worried about it. So yeah, we can add. It. We can uh, explicitly add a guide related to the notation plugin for AWS KMS if uh, if that plugin is ready. Is ready. I mean, add that uh, oh. document to the notation website or remote signing. Yeah, I think this is a conversation um, we're having in general in terms of like how we look at. <clears throat> um, um, supporting plugins and making plugins discoverable. Um, I think this are this is a good kind of like um, um, post RC one conversation to have in terms of like what we look at notations rule from a governance perspective, right? Um, yeah. Are we going to get in the process of kind of looking at plugins and blessing them? What does that process look like in terms of like you know testing? Um, what does it mean from a vendor's perspective, or are we just going to kind of you know, um, allow plugins to be uh, more self-discovered. I think that's a good conversation to have. Um, mm -hmm. We've we, we'd want to focus on kind of making sure we get the um, the 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 notation RC one out so we can start testing and 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 developing some of this additional functionality. Um, but yes, uh, that's a good conversation. I think we should come back and have post RC one. Okay. The reason that I asking about the vendors plugin of notation uh, it is because uh, we see a lot of users that is uh, uh, who are asking about the uh, KMS plugin, Azure keyboard plugin and the Hashcorp vote plugin. Yeah, I think we can bring these, all of those guys and uh, process processes post RCY. Yeah. Uh, we are out of time, but I would like to take this uh, opportunity to show you something that uh, we mentioned this uh, uh, application, right? Actually, the weekly build, uh, if you remember, uh, Samir, uh, 
uh, it's uh, actually uh, it was enabled since last week. So every week we will have this uh, dev build weekly dev build for notation CLI. So any PRs merged during that week, uh, the next week we will have a, a dev build. We can start replication. Currently there is no automation testing available for notation CLI, but later we can introduce the test cases gradually. Then each week we will have a weekly dev build, and we, we also have a and uh, and the test cases to make sure the uh, the regression will work. So we we can gradually uh, improve this uh, testing framework. Okay, that sounds fair. No, this is great. I think post RC one, um, um, this will allow kind of like more faster dev builds. Um, and so that this is great to kind of have. I think uh, once we have that testing framework in place. Yeah. Thanks, Nias. And just for clarification, right? So we have the unit test cases. You're talking about the end-to-end -end CLI test cases, which we have moved to do. RC yeah, this is, is uh, yeah, this, uh, uh, what I just talked about is about this end-to-end -end CLI test. For the API level, we, we already have the unit test cases address that, and we have a code coverage report for that, for the library especially, yeah. Cool, thanks. Um, I have a question related to the dev build. If we don't have any peer merged in last week, will this uh, release program uh, do a do, will this release program do a automated build and the release uh, on the next Monday? I'm not sure uh, if we. <laughs> yeah, cur currently it was enabled every week. Uh, we ex expect the more PRs can be merged during a week. So if you see, we don't have much to be merged in one week. This is also reflect that something should uh, should be fixed, right? Uh, there should be some something to be fixed within one week. Consider this iteration. Uh, I mean, currently maybe we don't have that, but but we may we may need to think about to improve this PR merge process because we we have something there. Yeah. But by Actually, default, currently, no matter any new PR merge, it will trigger a build. It, it's just a dev build. It uh, doesn't harm anything else. Actually, I have one feedback on that when just thinking through it. We should not tag it with alpha 3 or any release name. Just call it a dev build from the main line. Uh, that way, there's no confusion. Or it's, in my mind, it was confusing to say alpha 3.dev because we're not it was it's not based on the branch of alpha 3 we did not branch alpha 3 so i think it would be nice if we just call it a mainline build versus related to an alpha or any other release uh, actually we, for for the for the target name we have a discussion thread in in the issue you, you can check uh, and based on that discussion the uh, the decision is to use the previous release plus the depth to indicate uh, and also indicate the, the time. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I sorry, I had a brain fart. I forgot that we did discuss this, yes. Yeah, but anyway, we, we can improve it uh, later, uh, step by step, no problem for that. Currently, it's just a, a framework we, we are trying to set up for, for a frequent release, and also later we introduce the test framework. Okay. All right, uh, seems like our next milestone will be in alpha four, where we fix the bugs of alpha three, which prevent end-to-end -end, uh, testing with say ECR or ACR or the right plugins. And uh, we're gonna look at the scoping work for RC1. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks Samuel. We, we have all that issue under the notation planning board. So if you see any any question, you you can just add a comment. Yeah. Uh, we we have that. Uh, uh, sorry, I I didn't have that board right. Yeah. You you can switch to the column of comment. You you can add a comment there so that we can uh, we can discuss. And you you can uh, uh, using the Slack. We we can continue uh, chat offline uh, using Slack. Yep. Yep, let's do that. Yeah, I was on vacation most of last week, so yeah.
it didn't work this week. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, guys, I have one. I have another request uh, that I hope you can agree. Um, you know, uh, the second community call of notary uh, is. Uh, I think it is, it is in your during your morning, but. Uh, the time zone is not quite friendly to E and me or someone else in Asia time zone. So is it possible to uh, reschedule the second the second uh, commit core to the same time? Uh, I mean, uh, to the 5 p.m. Uh, PST on Thursday. In this yeah, we way, had a discussion around this earlier um the reason we have the morning and the evening time zones is that uh, with two meetings we can address different time zones um and so i think we had um um uh, we kept the tuesday morning to be more european time zone friendly and we kept the monday one to be um um more um um, Asia Pacific uh, time zone friendly, um, and we on the West Coast <laughs> end up pushing early in the day or late in the day uh, to make sure we can keep some continuity because I think the bulk of the maintainers are are working from this time zone. Um, if we need additional calls, though, I think we can we can look to see if we can schedule some uh, a third call. Um, but I think for now, like at least Slack has been helpful in closing some of those things. But um, let us know as we're kind of going through if you feel like work is being blocked or slowed down. Um, I think we can investigate if you want to add in a third meeting. Um, I think uh, currently two meetings are enough to us. Uh, I, I understand the difficulties that we live in different time zones all around the world. Uh, I, but uh, actually, we see the communication gap, communication gap uh, it, between our two sides. Yeah, I mean, uh, the current maintainers for Microsoft and AWS. So I think um, at least before the RC1, uh, I'm not sure if we can reschedule uh, the second one to uh, to your afternoon. Anyway, I think uh, if we, if you think we can uh, keep this and uh, uh, add additional communication. I, th I think we can do that with Samir and uh, Miriam. Yeah. Mm, uh, I would suggest that for now we can uh, we we have the, we keep the uh, the two meetings as it is, and we we can actively use the Slack channel. We can ping each other, free free to ping each other, and then if we see there is a need for an ad hoc meeting, we, we can trigger it from the Slack. Then then we just do it. Yeah, I think that sounds fair. And I think if we keep it on the NV2 channel, so that if I'm not available, like last week I was not available this week, Bill in the start, if we keep it all on the common NV2 channel, then somebody else can jump in uh, as well. So for example, Wani can jump in if I'm not there, or or, or Rakesh can jump in if Melinda's just not there. So if, instead of sending it to a specific person, if we send it to a specific person but keep it on the NV2 channel, then others can jump in as needed. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. It's a good call. Uh, lots of things to do before Monday to get an Alpha Four out. Then. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, bye-bye.